Hi there, my name is Evan Carter. I'm a reporter with Michigan Capital Confidential. Today I'm joined by Re Republican gubernatorial candidate, Attorney General Bill Schutte. Thank you for being with us today, Attorney General. Listen, thank you, Evan. Great to be here. It's uh, wonderful to be at the Mackinac Center. And uh, this is Schutte Unplugged uh, uh, here at the Mackinac Center with a great Hillsdale grad. So good, uh, good day. Great to be here. Well, first, help us get to know you, Attorney General. What kept you in the state as an adult and what's your favorite part of living here? Well, you know, I'm uh, born and raised uh, in Midland, Michigan, uh, and my roots go a little farther back than that. My mom, my grandfather was a shop teacher. My grandmother was an elementary school uh, teacher in Cleveland, Ohio. And my mom and dad were uh, high school sweethearts. And they grew up in the Great Depression, which was a time for historians out there in the, in the Internet. Uh, the Great Depression was a time of economic calamity in America. People were uh, out of hope, uh, out of work, uh, and out of luck. It was uh, really a disastrous time economically for uh, America. My dad, uh, fortunately, was able to land a job at Dow Chemical uh, in Midland, Michigan. And so my mom and dad uh, motored from Cleveland, Ohio to Midland, Michigan, uh, planted their flag, uh, is, uh, you know, started uh, the Shooty family. But tragically, when I was uh, just a boy of six, and my dad was a man of 47, uh, he died of uh, a heart attack. But my mom was tough and, and resilient, and uh, she persevered and raised my two older sisters and me. And so Midland, Michigan is my home, and I uh, married a, a young girl at the, the bus stop on Applewood uh, uh, Road in Midland, who, by the way, ignored me for about 20 years. So I'm an acquired taste, uh, to be sure. But uh, now my wife Cynthia and I have uh, two children. Midland's our home. We have a daughter who's uh, uh, 25. Uh, and a son who is 22, so we'll be 22. So uh, that's the shooty. Uh, the shooty's called Midland, our home, and and that's uh, I'm a Michigan guy, and I want to make sure that uh, we drive our state forward. And I'm running for governor because I want our state to grow, and we need to be a growth state. We need to be a, a paycheck state. We need to be a job state. And in order to achieve that, we need to have a jobs governor. Okay, so switching on to policy <clears throat> questions now, um, in the past number of years, the state of Michigan has given about a billion dollars in general fund revenue annually in select tax credits to specific businesses. And last year, the legislature passed two more major tax credit packages. Was this a good idea or was this a bad idea? I think the, the whole predicate uh, in terms of policy for me and for Michigan is where do you want to go and what do you want to achieve? 2018 is a pivotal uh, uh, point for Michigan. Uh, we can either go backwards or we can go forwards. We cannot go backwards. We can't go back uh, uh, to the Jennifer Granholm disciples and lieutenants that, uh, that drove our state to, to the ground. We need to go forward. Now we've rebounded, uh, right? Uh, but we're still, to this day, uh, 300,000 jobs short of where we were during the lost decade of, of Granholm. 55 counties in Michigan have lost population in this decade. They play uh, eight-man football uh, teams, uh, and they have, they have to combine schools together to get enough uh, skiers to compete against other schools in, in skiing contests. Now, this is not a story, uh, about Evan, about do you like football or do you like skiing. I like them both, but the point is our big challenge in Michigan is population. We need to grow our state. So we need to have an environment, and I think people at the Mackinac Center and, and policy uh, uh, folks in Michigan understand, we need to have an environment and, and a lens, a lens for Michigan <clears throat> that is clear and vibrant and expansive, that is about entrepreneurism, free markets, and, and, uh, uh, and free thinking. And that's the type of environment we have to do to increase jobs for big businesses and small. Now, it's, there's a war out there, right? There's an economic civil war, and the competition for jobs and placement in industries is fierce. Now, I don't believe in unilateral disarmament. Right? So object, uh, objective one is have an environment of low taxes, fewer regulations, and so we can win again. The uh, second objective is let's compete against other states. I want us to win against the, the, the Floridas and the Carolinas and the Tennessees where their growth is better than Michigan's. Now, I'm not uh, settling for second best. You've got to have big aspirations if you want to achieve anything in, in Michigan and America. So we have to have big goals. So we also need to compete against other states that uh, offer incentives for businesses to plant capital and build jobs. But 
but it ought to be balanced. We need to treat Michigan companies and Michigan businesses with the same part of incentives to make sure that uh, they also are rewarded for growth, just like we'd like to attract other businesses. But you can't play one against the other, and you need to make sure you're not you know, willy-nilly handing out tax credits and some company pockets them and doesn't build jobs. You mentioned tax cuts. If you were governor and a income tax cut down to 3.9% was on your desk, would you sign it? Let me tell you, that is the uh, one of the number one, the number one agenda on uh, my desire to serve as governor. And it'll be the first point because you know uh, this grand home tax increase years ago was supposed to have been uh, rolled back. It never has been. And that's one of the centerpieces of, of what we need to do in terms of tax policy is driving a stake through the legacy of the lost decade of Jennifer Granholm and eliminating that uh, tax increase once and for all. Now here's why. We, we, it has cost, the Granholm tax increase has cost uh, Michigan eight billion dollars uh, since it was passed and we ought to put that money back into people's pockets you know contrast that with what uh, uh, Trump and the Republicans are, are doing in uh, in Congress in Washington we've uh, uh, rolled back taxes on the national level and think what that means for Michigan as an example we're going to bring uh, the production of the Ram truck Ram truck rather from Mexico to Michigan in the Warren truck plant. That'll be a billion dollars investment, 2,500 new jobs, and everybody at Fiat Chrysler Automotive is receiving a uh, Trump tax cut of $2,000. Now, in Michigan, we should couple the tax increases from Washington by rolling back uh, taxes here in our state. And I want to eliminate that uh, Grand Home uh, tax increase. It means that this is the guiding principle for Bill Schuette. We need to make sure that people get to keep more of what they earn, and the government takes less of what you make. That's why I'm for rolling back the Grand Home tax increase. We need to compete. Um, and, and you got me on a roll here, because the point is, you look across America, um, where is the growth? The growth is in states that have lower taxes <clears throat> and fewer regulations. And that's the type of Michigan we need to have. Look at it this way. Um, we've lost uh, five members of Congress over the uh, several decades. We once had 19 members of Congress. We'll have 13 members of Congress after the next census. The math is easy. You don't have to be a wizard to understand that. Other states are beating us, growing more than we are. And I want to be judged as governor of the state of Michigan, where we're adding members of Congress instead of losing members of Congress. And let's, uh, let's build schools instead of consolidating closed schools. That's the governor I want to be. Switching gears <coughs> quickly, criminal justice reform, that would be a big issue a governor would have to deal with. Yeah. What do you think about this issue, and are there any specific reforms you'd like to talk about in the criminal justice system? You know, I think it's important that uh, on this issue of criminal justice that the uh, two points are uh, firmly in mind. Number one, people want to have safe streets and secure neighborhoods, and so that schools are places of learning, uh, not of violence. But it also means uh, we're a country with a heart and spirit of, of second chances. And so, and it's the 21st century. And that's why I think it's important that you try to uh, differentiate between violent and nonviolent crime. And there are bills going through the Michigan legislature right now that tries to uh, address this issue of differentiating violent crime and nonviolent crime in terms of uh, accelerating the parole opportunities uh, for nonviolent offenders. Uh, Clint Kesto has a bill moving through the legislature right now that I think will pass, and I'm, I'd be pleased by that. I also, as Attorney General, worked with prosecuting attorneys across the state of Michigan, and we had seven civil asset forfeiture bills passed, which is a reflection of due process, the Constitution, uh, and uh, in fairness. So I have had a track record of making sure we have strong measures of public safety, but also respect for the Constitution and due process and private property rights. And this uh, new uh, approach that Representative Kesto and others in the House and Senate are trying to launch and pass, I think is a positive step forward. So uh, we can achieve things in Michigan, and as governor, I want to make sure that uh, uh, everyone knows that uh, everyone needs a second chance and we ought to have uh, hearts that uh, reflect that and making sure that uh, our streets are safe and secure and our schools as well.
On to energy. In 2008, former <clears throat> Governor Jennifer Granholm signed the Renewable Energy Portfolio Standard. And then in 2016, Governor Snyder expanded upon it. So now our energy, electricity energy providers, have to get 15% of their energy from what the state deems as a renewable energy source. Was this renewable energy portfolio a good idea, or was this a bad idea? I think this 15% uh, renewable standard is a pragmatic decision made by everyone in the state of Michigan. I believe you need to have a mix, a mix of uh, energy alternatives and options for a state to be strong and viable. That means a mix, a mix of uh, uh, gas, uh, uh, clean coal, uh, nuclear uh, renewables, uh, uh, a balanced portfolio for uh, energy use and mix. We've achieved that in the state of Michigan. The 15 percent renewable standard uh, I think has it about right. And now let's go forward and try to have uh, reliable consistent uh, energy sources so that we thrive and grow. This is all about jobs. This is all about paychecks. And, you know, as Attorney General, what I did was uh, I sued the Obama administration because they tried to go around uh, uh, Congress. You couldn't get uh, uh, the, the handcuffs that uh, Obama wanted. He couldn't get it through the legislature in Washington, so we went around and put uh, some job-killing uh, ru rules and regulations forward. And as Attorney General of the state of Michigan, I sued the Obama administration, a case called uh, you know, Michigan versus EPA. It was like uh, the Supreme, stop in the name of love, stop in the name of Michigan and shooty. We beat the uh, uh, Obama and the EPA uh, in their job uh, killing regulations because they uh, couldn't establish a, a clear cost benefit uh, rationale for their uh, handcuffing regulations. And so I get the in importance of making sure that the states have responsibilities and we can't have a federal government trying to impose uh, energy uh, costs that uh, suffer at the hands of uh, Michigan workers, suffer at the hands of that. So, speaking of energy <clears throat> costs, residents in Michigan have the highest energy costs on average according to the federal agency that tracks that, the Energy Information Administration. As governor, what would you do to bring down residential energy rates? I think everybody feels this pinch, whether you have a um, cold winter or a hot summer, the energy rates we pay, uh, you know, it, it sticks you in the, in the pocketbook. So when people have their I don't know whether it's your Tuesday night finance night or you look at your, your bills uh, uh, when you're sitting at your home and there's too many bills and not enough check. And, and so that's why cutting in income tax rates, that's why having real auto insurance reform where we drop the rates are important for pay increases for Michigan families. And another ingredient of this stress on people is the issue of uh, energy costs. What I will offer as governor is someone who understands relationships and understands uh, the desire to make sure that people have lower costs. I'll work with uh, the energy providers in the state uh, firsthand, uh, directly, in person, and with members of the legislature. And I want to do everything we can to make sure we have a strong energy portfolio where uh, customers and companies have choice and ways we can drive our costs down to the, uh, the person you know, in, in Monroe or Menominee uh, in north, south, east, west. So I get the call for lower, uh, in, uh, lower uh, energy uh, rates. When you say choice, are you referring to energy choice in terms of buying more than, I don't know, it's like 90% cap now? Are you referring to that specifically? Yeah, I'm, just... I'm referring to that. I think that's an element <laughs> that needs to always be explored so there's greater choice and opportunities for uh, consumers uh, and, and customers and businesses, small and large, to have a lower, as lowest rates as possible. Um, another <clears throat> issue that a governor would have to deal with is Michigan's low-income residents. There's a number of them. What would you do? What are some government policies you think you could remove or encourage to be removed that would make their life easier? Well, I, I look at it this way. Um, everybody in the state, the real drive is uh, uh, paychecks, right, and, and income. And we need to have a, a state that uh, has more jobs and more paychecks. So 
part of the uh, opportunity you can give people is have a thriving economy and a growing economy. And right now, Michigan is a place where other states are growing faster than we are. We talked about that earlier in our discussion here, where uh, their population, they're increasing, and Michigan uh, uh, is steady. I'm not going to be governor, Evan. I'm not going to be governor and manage Michigan's decline. If, that's, if, if people want a shrinking pie theory for Michigan, I'll have none of that. I, ha I happen to have bold aspirations, big uh, goals, uh, not tiny, small, or incrementalism. That's done. I want to make sure that we have big goals for, for Michigan's future. That means more jobs, more paychecks, and lower taxes, and we've talked about that. I think that ho helps people who are low income. Uh, also, I think uh, requiring a, a work requirement uh, for Medicaid, for, Medicaid for uh, able-bodied adults uh, who are uh, not seniors are important because this element of work is a is an ethic and some and a culture that we need to reinforce all the time. I think that helps uh, people who are low income. Also, in terms of health care, we need to have a system that is. Uh, uh, market-oriented, where people get to choose their doctors. Uh, the one-payer uh, clarion calls out there, uh, it would be a dead-end street for uh, options, choices, and lower costs uh, in terms of health care. I mean, look at the VA. The fact that uh, we do not honor our veterans properly uh, in the VA and some of the problems and failures there is a great example why a single-payer system is a bad idea. So let's have greater choices in health care, which helps lower-income people. And also sometimes the, the rules and regulations that come out on, whether it's painters or uh, and, and braiding or hairdressing, uh, what have you. And I'm not being funny about that. These are rules and regulations that I think hamper uh, low-income folks who are trying to make it. Let's try to have a, uh, give folks a, a boost and a help instead of having, oh, you got to pass this uh, test or you have to get this license. Let's ease up on lic licensing requirements so that people can have entrepreneurism at the heart and spirit of their future instead of, oh, my gosh, i got to get a license from the government. No, that's what a happy day that's not. What would you say is the most important issue facing the state of Michigan right now, Attorney General Bill Schutte? I think the, the biggest, most important issue facing Michigan right now is population. And hey, listen, I'm an optimist. I'm Michigan's optimist. I'm probably America's optimist. But our biggest challenge is population. Other states are growing faster than we are. Look at the five biggest cities in the United States of America. Uh, where are they located? Texas. You know, 100, uh, a 747. A uh, plane load of people moved to Austin, Texas every day to live. Uh, 110 people moved to Nashville, Tennessee every day to live. Now, why does that happen? Is that because of the uh, temperature, uh, climate? No. It's about uh, lower taxes, uh, fewer regulations, fewer rules, an economic climate that encourages growth, opportunity, and, and freedom. And that's the lens that I view Michigan's future about. We need to make sure we grow our population, because I'm not going to be a governor who manages Michigan's decline. And, you know, sometimes people say, Bill, why do you want to cut taxes? We cannot afford not to cut taxes, because if we don't have more growth, and if our state doesn't grow, we'll be a, a, a smaller, shrinking, less significant uh, Michigan. I want to serve as Michigan's governor, to be Michigan's jobs governor, uh, so that we have uh, more paychecks, more growth, and more jobs. And also, I think it's an attitudinal thing. We, um, I want people to cop an attitude. I want people to cop an attitude about Michigan's future. And that if we have the right goals, if we have the right uh, vision, we have the right aspirations that's big, bold, and it's all about entrepreneurism uh, and free markets, Michigan can be a state that will be second to none, where people plant their flag, where people uh, raise their children, and where people build their futures. Thank you for being with us today, Attorney General. Delighted to be here. Thank you. If you'd like to see all of our gubernatorial interviews or you'd like to see news on policy and politics in Michigan, check out micapcon.com or look us up on Facebook.